Hello everyone. In this video and presentation, I will be taking you on a guide about what is Erasmus Plus, how you can apply for this fully funded master's scholarship and pursue your dream master's program. Before we move on to the content of our lecture and presentation, I would briefly tell you about edmora.org which is a platform where you can access video lectures that are 24 by 7 accessible. You can have live interactions with the instructors, you can find the relevant and authentic information which is up to date. The idea is that you can perform at your best in the tests. So moving on to what is Erasmus Plus. So Erasmus Plus scholarship is basically a fully funded scholarship uh, where you can pursue your master's program. Uh, you should be very careful because it is just for the master's program and not for the PhD or doctorate degrees. There are separate scholarships which are funded by the European Commission, uh, which comes under the category for the doctoral students. But for your master's program, which is after the bachelor's graduation, you can apply for this Erasmus Plus scholarship. When does it take place? It is in total a two years program of study, just like normal master's degree and starting from autumn september semester every year where does it happen since it is funded by the european commission the idea is that you study in different european institutes different european universities across the europe the application process is completely online so you don't have to submit any documents by hand or send them by post 99 percent of the time everything is online so if you know how you can apply for this scholarship how you can access all the information it is a very straightforward and easy process to follow uh, what are the what are some of the perks of uh, Erasmus plus scholarship so why this should be the goal of your studies let's say the first thing is that this is one of the highest paid master scholarship in the world there are few scholarships in the world that are in terms of monetary value they are very prestigious some of them are fulbright for example in the united states commonwealth in the united kingdom uh, shivening scholarship in the united kingdom then there are chinese scholarship and some of the australian scholarship etc which are uh, some of the highest paid scholarships but this erasmus plus scholarship has many plus points in comparison to other scholarships which i will be discussing in the following points the first and foremost is that you get a chance to study in three to four different european universities so at the end you get a joint master's degree which is not very common if you study through any other scholarship so within a period of two years getting an exposure of three to four different european universities and at the end you get a degree which is joint and you get a stamp from all the universities so this is something pretty cool. You don't get this thing in the Fulbright. You don't get this thing in the Shivening or in the Commonwealth or in the Australian scholarship or in the Chinese scholarship or Korean scholarships. So Erasmus Plus is something that offers you this unique experience. Next, you will see that in most of the scholarships such as Fulbright, Shivening, Commonwealth, Chinese scholarship, uh, there is a bond. So after you graduate, you have to go back to your home country and you have to serve for one year two year or three years depending upon the type of the bond in erasmus plus scholarship you do not have any kind of bond after graduation so you don't have to go back to your home country you are free to do whatever you want and so this is something that is very helpful uh, in terms of your career perspective and because you don't have a bond you have the opportunities available throughout the world so because you get a very niche experience of studying in different european universities getting a joint master degree and after you graduate you are open to the best opportunities in the world and definitely because of this prestigious scholarship and this prestigious experience you are preferred over many other candidates another important aspect is that having studied through this program which is very culturally diverse it offers you a study programs which range from different subjects so in terms of culturally like i mentioned that it is very diverse you get a chance to travel around europe without paying anything since it is a fully funded scholarship so you spend every semester in a different country in a different university and apart from that you can just go 
for the traveling purposes to explore different other countries and you can definitely manage it out of your budget of the scholarship so this is something pretty cool and it offers the study programs which range from arts and humanities psychology science engineering etc so in general every year there are more than 100 plus programs which are offered this is something pretty cool that you can choose from a list of programs that you want to apply and definitely you can find something that relates to your field your interest and then you can pursue this scholarship there are some important things that you should consider before you actually make your mind or start preparing your application number one is that since i mentioned there are more than 100 programs that are being offered every year but you can only apply to a maximum of three programs so if you apply for more than three programs four programs or five programs they will not consider your application for any of the programs because the funding comes under the european commission authority and they keep a track of everything so they know that this candidate with this passport with these details he applied for more than three programs they will discard all of your application so you can apply to a maximum of three programs this is something very important next is that the applications they usually open in september or october and they last until february or march every year so it actually varies a little bit depending upon the program in which you are intending to apply therefore you should start preparing your documents way beforehand you intend to apply you should carefully read the instructions that are given on the website we will be exploring them uh, in a while as to how we can actually get through the instructions that are very crucial very important that you should read very carefully otherwise you might miss one point that was mentioned in the eligibility criteria that you don't fulfill let's say and then you apply for the program and you just miss that opportunity because you were not eligible to apply so you should read everything very carefully so that you don't miss anything and the thing that you should apply one or two weeks before the deadline is just to give a cushion because most of the times what happens is when you delay it until the very last day there are a lot of applicants who are submitting applications so the portal sometimes it gets uh, too loaded that you are unable to submit your application and then you miss the deadline so it's a bit problematic in that case therefore you should prepare beforehand everything and you should try to submit your application one or two weeks before the deadline now we will be going step by step through the website of few different programs i will be telling you how you can explore the websites of different programs to get the crucial information which i mentioned that you should read very carefully and we will get to know how we know about the deadlines of that program what documents do we need and all the information about that program if it is related to your field or if it is not related to your field this link here is the official website of the erasmus plus program as you can see it says erasmus plus and this means erasmus masters a joint masters degree catalog so now we will be exploring this website we will be seeing what are the 100 plus programs that are being offered let's say this year more or less they are the same every year but there are few changes so some of the programs they remove them some new programs are added it it just depends upon what is the need in the society so maybe there is one program that is more important than the other one so they give funding to that program and this thing keeps on varying uh, but not too much so most of the time the main programs that are famous ones for example relating to environment or relating to the subjects that are very important these days they stay there for a couple of years so anyways now we will be going on this website and exploring how we can uh, get to the crucial information of uh, application to the Erasmus Plus scholarship. Once you click on this link or if you write on the Google and go to this website, this is the main website, official website of the European Commission, which is education audiovisual and cultural executive agency anyways here you can see in the erasmus plus there are different options that you can 
choose from but these are not of your importance as of now there is some important message to the international students which tells you that you have to be cautious in terms of publicity and in terms of your data and money and all those things and as you come down you can see that you have the options to choose the field of study which range from chemistry economics mathematics physics social science environmental science or you can choose depending upon the country or depending upon the universities or depending upon the year in which uh, the students intake will happen so for example 2022 or 2023 you can choose in terms of the credit hours or the years of the project selection in which the project was funded but i don't really recommend you to choose any of these options here you should select any any in all of them so that it gives you all the programs that are available okay so once you're on this website and you have selected like all in these options you can see there is a long list of programs which is i would roughly say around 120 or even more than that all of these programs every row has one program which is a master's degree so for example this program which is a short code for cts plus it is a program about Erasmus Mundus Joint Master Degree in Urban Studies. Similarly, the next program is about Aquaculture, Environment and Society. Similarly, there is program about Architecture, about Big Data Management, about Master Study on Circular Economy, Euro Aqua Plus, there is Interdisciplinary Master of Frequent Studies, there is on Law and Economics, Nanoscience and Nanotechnology, then there is on Tourism, material engineering then you have flood risk management you have on global markets development policy a lot of different programs sports and ethics marine environment european forestry quantitative economics so this is something related to it security and cloud computing advanced soil mechanics waves acoustics vibrations engineering masters in work organization and personal psychology so you see that this list is very diverse you have programs which encompass the economics policy engineering social sciences and many other fields as you can see now what you have to do the first very first step you have to remember that you can choose a maximum of three programs first you have to read every program line by line because these names are not very common so for example if you apply in general for a program for a master's study it is like a master's in mechanical engineering or master masters in mathematics or masters in physics or masters in psychology or something like that but here you don't find those conventional names these names are a bit confusing at times but if you spend some time you will be able to understand them so for example this Erasmus Mundus Joint Master Degree in Urban Studies. All you have to do is to go through this list one by one through each program by reading their names or the names of the program. And you have to identify that if this program relate to your field or if it does not. So I will be doing this for you uh, for one or two of them. So for example, let's say you're a student of engineering, in particularly civil engineering, and you intend to see that which of the programs could be related to your studies so you go to the first program it says Erasmus Mendes joint master degree in urban studies well in civil engineering there are sometimes courses related to urban planning urban cities or something like that I think this could be one of the options but I really don't know what is inside but when I will open the website of this program I will read about the introduction and the objectives of this program. I will get to know if this is related to my field or not. Then I move on to the next one, which is about aquaculture, environment and society plus. So definitely civil engineering and environment, they are pretty close. And aquaculture means that it has something to do with water. So I should open this and read it to understand if it relates my interest or if I am eligible or not. The next one is about development in social work. Well, civil engineering has nothing to do with the social work. I mean, maybe to some extent, but this is not the core purpose. So this is something that definitely is not 
related to my field at all i can skip this one for sure next one is agriculture food and environmental policy analysis it is possible because of the environment and agriculture that there could be something related to civil engineering or something related to water and environment so i can explore this one and see if how much this is related to my field or to my interest similarly you can see architecture maybe they accept civil engineering because of architecture and because of uh, the close relationship between these two two fields as close relationship and close rivalry as well anyways then there is advanced material science and engineering very highly likely civil engineering has the component of materials as well and because it is material science and engineering this could be related to mechanical engineers as well then you have aquaculture again it is possible but this involves management as well but it is possible that they might accept civil engineering students similarly you go through all the fields so for example you go until end line by line every master's program and let's say you identify a few of them they won't be more than i would say 10 that you would see that might be they are the ones that i am eligible to apply for so for example the last one which is a work organization and in-person psychology definitely an engineering student would not be interested to even open this one because if the title is very clear that this has nothing to do with engineering or with his field so you should definitely skip this one and focus on the one that gives you even a slightest notion that this could be related to your field or not okay so considering the same uh, assumption that i made in the start that i am a let's say student of civil engineering exploring to apply for master's program related to civil engineering studies let's say i identified uh, these different programs so the first program was this one which i said urban studies might be this is the one where I could be eligible to apply, but I would have to open it, see the objectives of this program, the eligibility criteria and all the information that is very crucial and to identify if I am eligible or if I am not. Now you see that there are two links. One is this link, which is the short code of this complete master's degree program. And then there is this another second link, which is about this master's degree program in general. If you click on this link and open it in a new tab, this will give you the overall general information about the master's degree program. In this website, you will not find information about the eligibility criteria or about the, uh, let's say, the detailed information about what will be the track of your studies. Let's say, where will you do your first semester, then second semester, third, and so on. This is the information that you will usually not find in this page. So this page just gives you a very brief summary of the project. It gives you the project map, but you don't really need these things. It tells you what is the main university, which is the coordinating. For example, in this case, this is the university in Brussels, Belgium. And then these are the partner universities where you will be studying different semesters. So for example, one is in the Denmark, then there are two universities from Spain, one from Austria, and this is the main university. Uh, no, this is another university from the Belgium, but this is the main university. It tells you that this is the total grant which has been awarded to this Erasmus Mundus program. This is the period of funding. So it started in 2018 and it will last until 2025, this program. And after that, if they get another funding round, maybe this program will continue, otherwise, there will be some other programs that will be added and in the summary it just gives you a brief idea that it is a two-year program which has this credits and it is by six universities in four cities in brussels in vienna copenhagen and madrid and the main objective is to acquire a comprehensive and comparative knowledge of european studies with different welfare state systems in globalizing world so even from this page you get a little bit of idea that it is more related to the nature of work is more theoretical so for example they are more interested in the welfare state systems and the the overall world situation and scenario then it says that underpinned by the interdisciplinary and mix of analysis and action that is characterized of the field of urban studies 
maybe I'm not really aware of if there are certain courses that are offered in urban studies in the bachelors. So maybe this is something that is more related to them. But this, like I said, summary is very brief. So you don't really get an idea of who is eligible and who is not. So this website is what you get from this big link. If you go to this smaller link and open it in the new tab, this is the website of the actual master's program. So you see it says this is four cities, master's in urban studies, and this is the main page of the uh, master's program website. This is the website where you can find all the information about the master's program, about who is eligible, who is not, about how you can apply for it, what are the deadlines, and in case if you need to contact them. So you see that if you go on these different options in the program you see that they tell you about the approach and structure that what will be the structure of the program what will be the curriculum of the program during two years what will be the track that you will follow first semester second third and fourth and so on what are the research and practice star tracks that you can follow and then the master thesis of probably some previous students or the potential institutes or the topic or subject matters in which you can pursue your master's thesis here you can see it tells you about their philosophy and mission their staff and some more information about the program then you see here on the admissions you have admission overview how to apply some frequently answered questions asked questions about the fees and the Erasmus Mendes scholarship and the online application module first thing that you have to do is you go to the admissions overview in the admission panel you have to see if you are eligible or if you are not eligible so if you go in the admissions overview it tells you some information because of the covid pandemic as well if they are going to uh, carry on with the new cohort or not you will find all this information here there is some general information that where you will be studying and then there is this eligibility criteria now this is very important you should read it very carefully this is the first step that you should do after opening the website that you think is or could be the potential program to you so it says that four cities seeks students who are informed engaged experienced and highly motivated and recognizes that aspiring urbanists travel many different roads Applicants can come from anywhere in the world and are eligible if they have at least 180 ECTs academic bachelor degree or its equivalent in geography, planning, architecture, history, criminology, political science, sociology, demography, media and communication studies, cultural studies or similar disciplines. So you see these fields which have been explicitly mentioned or they say something that is similar to these fields. Those are the students who can apply for this program and they should have at least 180 ECTs European credits in their bachelor's degree this European credits is basically what they use here in the Europe we don't have this system back in let's say our countries in Asia or even in some uh, countries for example in the United Kingdom also I think they do not use this system this is a different system but if you have a bachelor degree which is four years definitely you have at least 180 ECTs equivalent so you are eligible if you have a bachelor's degree of four year so if you read this line and you see that okay I have a degree in let's say architecture or I have a degree in criminology or sociology or cultural studies you're eligible then there is a common document which is required almost in all the applications of the Erasmus Mundus, which is a proof of the English certificate. So they say that you need to prove of the fluency in English is required and should be sought well in advance of the application window. And they give you the requirements of uh, uh, this English certificate when you go to the how to apply section. Anyways, then the next one is that the most concerning eligibility as well as required document and the entire application process are answered on the online application module so okay so they say that once you do the registration you will go to this online application module and then you will be getting to know more about the required documents if your field of studies is not mentioned and is not from a similar discipline please contact us so you see because they have mentioned here that 
if you have any other discipline but is similar to this one you are still eligible but just to be on the safer side they recommend that you should contact with them and confirm if you have a degree that is other than this one but you think you are eligible it's not exactly from one of these something similar but you're not sure you should go here and contact them so you just click on the contact us and it will open your email and you can just send them an email anyways then they tell you some more information that if you have not yet uh, graduated from your undergraduate degree and you want to apply you can do so but you will get a conditional letter if you're in your final year you can apply but you get a conditional offer and once you finalize your degree you submit your degree and then you will get an unconditional offer and subsequently you will keep on moving with your application process but this is something that comes later so the gist is that you don't need to be graduate to apply for this program or mostly almost for all the programs if you are even in the final year you can apply and get selected <coughs> sorry so for the selection process, you see they say that each year they take 40 students from approximately 600 to 800 qualified applicants. So this is quite competitive. Successful applicants combine a stellar academic record and recommendation letters and all those things that we will be uh, taking into account later uh, during our course. And then you see an important section of deadlines. So it tells you that uh, the application window for the students who want to study in 2021 like starting in 2021 they will the application window for students beginning their studies in 2021 will open on 1st of november 2021 there are two application windows for students applying for scholarship the deadline is this so this is important and the students all the students applying before this deadline they are automatically considered for scholarship and then self-paying students they have different deadline which is this one so this is the deadline for this program it is different for all the other programs every program has its own deadline has its own set of requirements has its own set of criteria and uh, you will have to read all these things very carefully to see if you are eligible for this program or if you are not and then it tells you some more information about visas and these kind of things but they come later about housing and these days so they definitely help you once you get selected once you apply if you fulfill the eligibility you get selected then comes all the next processes when you uh, sought help for the visas and accommodation all those kind of things before moving to the Europe anyways this was the website where I showed you that how you can actually do the first primary check of your eligibility now if you think you are eligible you belong to one of these programs you have already graduated or if you are in your final year these are the main requirements that are required for the eligibility next thing if we go back to the main website of this four cities program here you can see how to apply section right so in the how to apply section there is again some information which is non-trivial because of covid it again tells you the deadline for all the students who apply for scholarship it says the official application is included within the online application module so if you open this online application module it will take you to another uh, website where you will first have to register if you are not registered and then log in and then the application will pop up but this is something very self-explanatory how to apply is these are the steps so step one you have to register on the portal which I just opened step two you complete the online information and you this is the most time-consuming part of the process so they tell you if it's how much time it takes or what do you actually need so this is now again important this is now the second step after you are after you have identified that you are eligible to apply you have to check what are the documents that you need so for example it needs diploma of your previous studies the mark list which is transcript a motivation letter two recommendation letters proficiency of english 
relevant activities could be extracurricular or social or anything or internships or work experience passport and a passport style photograph these are the documents that you should include in your online application after you have added all these information you apply you send your uh, this and then you just wait all all applications will be reviewed and ranked by academic board three outcomes are possible selected waiting list not selected so if it's selected after they give you the result it means you have been selected for the scholarship and for the program if you're on the waiting list it means that if someone leaves the program and there is a vacancy then you could be considered as a potential candidate if it's not selected that it means that you have been not selected by the admission committee and they say that we give you the results by 1st of March so <clears throat> you see 15th of January was the deadline and they will notify you by the 1st of March so it's uh, it's pretty fast actually these are the documents which they explain in detail here and in terms of English proficiency which is usually a lot of students confuse about if they need to give IELTS or not they have given you the whole information about what you could do so for example in this case they say if you have a diploma in English you can just give a certificate and it will work fine but this is just for this program and every program has its own instruction and its own guidelines therefore you should explore all the programs that you think are possible potential programs to your interest or to your eligibility criteria all right so once you have seen if you are eligible to apply and you have also checked that what are the documents that you need to apply you can go to the main website of this master's program and you can actually study their philosophy and mission so this is important as well so you have to identify if the interest of this master's program and your interest does it match or is it different so here you can see what is their philosophy they tell you everything very clearly some some interesting sort of guides as well what is their mission what kind of candidates they are looking for or what kind of candidates they want you to be after you graduate and two years four cities you see this is pretty much quite a lot of information that you can uh, get to know about what is this master's program is actually offering you can explore the lecturers and staff and you can see who are the teachers and what sort of subjects they will be teaching and you can dig deeper into that as much as you want based on your interest in this program you can also see the classical track let's say for uh, the portal and it will tell you that uh, so for example in semester three you will be going into this particular university which i assume is in the denmark uh, yeah it's in the copenhagen denmark and these are the subjects that you will be studying there similarly in the fourth semester you get a chance to go to the autonomy university of madrid or uh, this is another university of madrid uh, where you can do your hopefully i think thesis these are some of the pictures i think of the previous students who studied in this program and then there is pretty much a lot of other information that will make you uh, feel comfortable about what is this master's program about and if you really want to apply for this or not so the idea is that once you are on this website you have to absorb all the information that you can starting from eligibility because this is the first step if you are eligible only then it makes sense that you explore the rest of the options otherwise there is no need to waste time so do a smart check check the eligibility if you are eligible then go and read about the program the approach the mission philosophy objectives and if it really excites you then you go to the eligibility criteria again and there you can find information about uh, what are the documents that you need so for example also in the how to apply section you can find this information as well so in the admissions portal in general you can find all the information about eligibility about the documents about the deadlines so go through all these informations and once you have made your mind that this is the program that excites you you know the deadlines you know the documents you know what you have to 
you have to fulfill to apply for this program and then you start your application or whatever you think is the best course so this is the way to explore the websites of the Erasmus program this was the one example that I did I will do another example for you because every website is diff every website is different but they are not so different so for example we can go to let's say an other website randomly for example this cloud computing and networking so similarly there are two links this link this gives you a general summary of the program so in this case you see the coordinating university is in France then there are two other universities one is in Sweden one is in the United Kingdom this tells you the period of funding the amount of funding that this program got and some general ideas so this is about uh, sustainable future information community technology more related to software or information technology students or computer science I think but it also is expected to provide benefits across triple bottom line sustainability so they actually deal with some technical information of environment as well so it seems like quite a lot of uh, diversity in this program anyways so this is just a basic summary right you cannot get, get much out of this website now you go to this website which is the website of the master's program because we saw in this link that the main university was from France so when you go to the link of the master's program this is the main coordinating university who has designed this web page or the website of this program now you see this website is quite different from the one that we explored before anyways with a little bit of struggle you will see that you will be able to find all the similar information that we found there first of all we need to check the eligibility so we go to let's say application again it's an online application like I mentioned it gives you the deadline first of all so it says the deadline is the 14th of February 2021 and it opened in October actually then it says that any application submitted after the deadlines will be automatically rejected so that's again the point that I made you before that you should submit beforehand just to avoid any sort of problems because if the system is online and if it's computer based it will automatically reject even if you make requests to the coordinators that uh, you got some real problem it will make no sense and there will be nothing they can help you with so you have to be careful about that thing you come down <coughs> you see that it gives you about the admission requirements so degree it says the master's course is open to European non-European excellent students with a BSc in computer science computer engineering automatic electrical electronics engineering or information technology so like I was telling you that this seems like a program which is related to computer fields or software or IT here we see that what sort of students they are seeking in their bachelors and then again the English language and they give you more information so for example in this case also they accept that if you have studied in the previous institute where the English was your main language then you can actually skip this uh, taking any one of these tests well now I see that more and more programs are accepting this uh, language certificate from the previous institute uh, but it again depends on every program then there are some privileged countries which are basically English or they're more developed let's say so they don't really need to submit uh, any certificate they are exempt from the English language testing because they apply from these countries uh, anyways if you go down it gives you some more information about the scholarship about the okay so this is another thing it says program country and partner country program countries are basically the countries that take part in the Erasmus plus program they are the program countries so for example 
all the European countries, they are the program countries. Students whose nationality is one of the Erasmus Plus program countries count as program country students. The program countries correspond to member countries of the European Union and the following countries North Macedonia, Iceland, Norway, Serbia, Turkey and all these countries. So it tells you that program countries are the ones that belong from the European Union and few of these countries. All the other countries, they are the partner countries. So all the Asian countries that we have Australia, United States, Africa, all of them, they are classified into partner countries. The, there is no difference actually in terms of uh, your application. When you apply, the only difference is in terms of the payment of the scholarship. So the partner country, they get paid a little bit more in terms of the travel allowance and few other things as compared to the program country. Because if a student gets selected from Europe, and he has to study in Europe, it makes sense that he is not going to travel from a far place, so he won't need too much of travel expenses. Therefore, the travel expenses for the program country students is a little bit less, but the monthly allowance is the same for both of them. And there is another rule that you should be careful that if you are a resident in a program country for a total of 12 months over the last five years, then you actually apply as a program country so this is something that you should be careful about but this is uh, uh, th this doesn't actually affect uh, your application because when you will be applying they will be asking you about your details of uh, residence and all those things and therefore they will get an idea that from which uh, country you belong either program country or the partner country and these are the participation cost but because you will be applying for the Erasmus plus scholarship so you will not have to actually deal with any kind of uh, payments uh, while even for the application or even for the fees or anything if you get selected for the scholarship <clears throat> so this was the preliminary check that we made that what is the eligibility so if you're a student in one of these technologies or any of uh, uh, the related areas you're eligible to apply and you can have the English language certificate if you studied in English or it is even better if you have one of the uh, official certificates from a testing language centers then the next thing if you're eligible you go to the main website and you read what is this program about so you read about the philosophy, about the goals, about the objectives of this program and you realize that if it is actually related to your interest or if it is not. In the consortium, you can see there is some more information about the partners, what every partner is going to offer you during this whole master's degree program and then you see that they have a really diverse range of connections with other universities around the world so ranging from UAE to Egypt to Malaysia Luxembourg South Africa Netherlands Sweden this is quite a diverse uh, program where they have a lot of external connections with other universities as well in the program if you go you can see the objectives of the program an overview how it is divided the track so first one in France the second semester in the UK then in the Sweden and then the final thesis work is something that you can actually uh, pursue I think based on uh, whatever your motives are and there is some more information about how you will be progressing through this master's program once you're selected and how will be the degree awarding uh, take place so this is pretty much a lot of information that you should go through before actually making your mind if you really want to apply for this program. Once you have decided that you're eligible, the objectives of the program excites you, they are exactly what you want. The next thing is again the same, you define the deadlines, which are usually in this application portal or something similar if it's another master's program. You can identify the deadlines. 
you can check what are the documents list of required documents you see in this case they also require cv they require the country of residence or citizenship some general information employment recommendation letters and all these documents they are required for your uh, application and then they tell you what will be the selection criteria so in this case they give 45 percent of weightage to the academic record 25 percent to the language 15 percent to the other supporting documentation and 15 percent to your track record that if you had some awards in your past some scholarships some research experience some work experience etc so they will be deciding uh, grading you based on these criteria and then they will be making a, a list according to which they will be make, doing their selection depending upon what is the maximum number of scholarships that they can award so you define the deadlines and you define what you need in terms of documents and then you start working on your application and this is how you explore the website of the program similarly there are a lot of other programs you have to define three potential programs maximum that you are aiming at you, are, you should check you are eligible to apply for them the objectives the philosophy the goals of that program they match with your interest and you should be aware of your deadlines the required documents and you should be uh, well aware also about how to apply for that program which in general all the time is an online application free of charge and so you can submit your application online and within few months you will be getting your results as well so this website is what i said in the start is the official website by the european commission this list of programs which is i think more than 120 right now it gets updated every year around September or maximum October but more or less it remains the same there will be few programs that will be removed few programs will be added more and uh, more or less it will keep on getting updated another thing I would like to mention at the end is that you see maybe some of the programs will have something like this which has a star this star if you go down it says it is coming soon so this is a program which they have added to the list if you open this website which is about the summary it says that this program actually started in 2020 and it has funding for six years until 2026 so this program is actually coming soon but in here i think this website is yet to, to update this one because here you can already see this website which is the website of the program the master's program which should be here actually on this link is this one but it's not here so if you go on this website you can access from here and I think this is already available to apply uh, because it's fully function functioning right now and is the same like you go to the admission and applying you check the eligibility criteria and then you is the same so in this one they're looking for the people with these sorts of backgrounds and similarly you go to about us or the program you get about the philosophy their scopes their aims and then you go to admissions and applying and you check the deadlines the list of required documents and how to apply for this program and then you just start preparing your application so you will you might come across some programs that will have stars in this case this is already functional i think they yet just have to update this one but there will be some programs which will have these kind of things and it means that these programs they have got the funding but they are not yet functional so they are actually in the process of putting them here in the official website uh, to start accepting the student and the applications but as of now there is no program that is uh, there is another one uh, this one but also this one i think should be functional now this one does not have a website so yeah but it says noah has joint entry requirement admission criteria participation costs 
there is a website this one we can see if this is also functional or not so yeah this also has a website and i think they just uh, need to update it here and you can see application for short term no master once again selected for Erasmus Medicine. So you see this was the program that was offered before but then it got suspended and now they say they, they have got funding once again and this means that we will continue offering Erasmus for the next four editions. So they have got funding for the four years for four uh, cohorts starting from 2021 this year. So they are actually accepting students and you can find all the information here of course. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. I think by now you should be uh, well aware of how to explore all the websites the documents the eligibility application procedure and everything this websites is the key to all the crucial knowledge information that you should acquire before making your mind or before getting ready to apply for the scholarship so this was just a point that i was making that some of the programs with this star it means they are coming soon or most likely they are already there you just need to dig a little bit using this website and see if there is any other link to the master's program website and there you can find all the information and yeah that's all this is the guide of how you can explore the website of European Commission Erasmus catalog and how you can actually explore the crucial information of eligibility of the objectives of the program and about the deadlines and the list of required documents and how to apply for the program once you have done that successfully completed your application online you will just have to wait for one or two months and they will give you your results and If you are selected, you will be a part of a big Erasmus Plus family. So you have to start now and you can be the next Erasmus Plus scholar. Best of luck. That's all from now. That's all for now. And uh, good luck to all of you.